Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Between Two Fans. You are joined by myself, Daniel Skoltz, and my co-host, Stevie P. Stevie P, it is South Africa's voting day today. I'm wearing my attire, but I've already marked X on the on the ballot sheet um, a couple of weeks ago. Show me, show us your thumb for proof. Yeah, it is there. It is there. Everybody can see. It's, I mean, it used to be like purple. I don't even know what color this is. It's, like, it's the base here brown. Yeah, there's no consistency in, in, no. in, in colors. Um, yeah. But uh, from, from what I hear, you've you've dripped the system. Everyone else struggling with six-hour waits. you just slotting in there. Is this, is this all your friends in high places doing you favors? Look, at the end of the day, you know, it's you've got to understand the the environment that we play in, you know, and it's a, it's a high-pressure game down here in South Africa. So what you do, and this is, this is what I'm telling you, my fellow South Africans, is that uh, you wake up in the morning and you don't even bother going to the queues. My sister-in-law was at her voting station quarter past six for the polls that opened at seven. Shock and horror, the polls did not, in fact, open at seven. In fact, by half past seven, they were still not voting. And uh, she ended up, I think, voting just after 8 o'clock um, and was at very, very cold, dark, quarter past six. Steve, on the other hand, while she was in the queue waiting to vote, was on the driving range, warming up, sinking a few putts. Um, <laughs> ready to go low. Ready for, get, yeah, literally. And we didn't go low, but uh, we, got, we got 18 holes in. We had got, got a few no, beers we, we in. We never do, though, Stevie. We never do. No, we don't. We don't. We're not, we're not, we're not here to, to, to go low on, on the golf course. We're here to go high on the number of beers. And got some beers in. You know, had time to have some political chat around the golf course and, uh, you know, consolidate and, and, my And did those my, my beers voting. affect your ability to mark X in the ballot you intended to? No, no, no. We we were all good there. We had to make sure we knew exactly what was going. Although to be honest, I reckon I think I was making my decisions as as I got there. But I got it okay. very right. I you're using a tick, hey? You you yeah. meant to use the tick. <laughs> tick, yeah, exactly. And you and you ticked like your top three, hey? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I think that's how it works. Correct. Yeah. Well, so I was in and out of within forty five minutes. It was it was a it was a breeze. I uh, walked to my voting station two two k's up the road. Um. So that, that yeah, done my civic duty, and now we're doing what's the real civic duty, and that is. The Give me the fans what they want. And, Give me the fans and what is, they want. And that, is, and that is an hour of Dan and Steve chatting sport. Hopefully within an hour. We've got a jam-packed show today. We're going to be covering um, the Champions and Challenge Cup finals, uh, both blockbuster games in London, one of which I attended. Then we've got um, upcoming the last week of group stages for the URC. We've got the Premiership semifinals, um, in addition to that for rugby, then moving on to football, we've got um, the Conference League final this evening. We've got the, um, we'll have a look back at Bayer Leverkusen's season in the Europa League final and what happened there. The FA Cup final with Man United beating Man City. And obviously um, this weekend's Champions Cup final and everything to speak about in that. We're going to unfortunately have to speak about the end of the IPL and the final that it was. Um, and then, of course, the Proteas and their tour to West Indies. And what Which their didn't happen. three 0 loss to um, the West Indies away means for their T Twenty World Cup hopes, which starts on Monday. So there's a jam packed episode today. Um, I hope you enjoy it. But let's start off, Stevie, with as we always do, with the predictions of the week. So if you're new around here, we make a prediction on three different sporting games every single week, and we are tallying up a leaderboard the first to fifteen. Or well, the loser um, who doesn't get to 15 first is going to have to um, wear a sporting shirt of the other person's choosing. Um, and it's currently 9-6 going into this week. We made three predictions. First off, Stevie, um, let's get this one out the way. We predicted the IPL finalist. And I'm at that point, to, there I'm, were three teams in it. Here. Yeah, yeah. There were three teams in it. Um, you know, there was... There was um, RCB, which was my mm-hmm. prediction. Mm-hmm. You know, there was um, Sunrises Hyderabad, um, which was your prediction. Um, and as it turns no, out, there were there were four. There were, were, were yeah, there were three other options, and then Rajasthan Royals. We're going to join KKR and Rajasthan Royals exactly. Yeah. Um, so fair play to you. I'll give that to you. Your your, your prediction, you, you got it right. I'll, I'll be at there. Horror um, performance in the final. Um, hey, we didn't say he was going to perform well in the final. We just said he was going to be <laughs> 113 um, all out. I mean, all, you you never seen anything like it, but um, we'll, we'll get into that a little bit soon. So a strong start. Um, then moving into the 
rugby, we had the Challenge Cup, which I happened to attend live. The Sharks um, ended up winning that game by 14 points, 22 points to 36. To the Sharks, your prediction, prediction was Gloucester by seven. Mine was Gloucester by five by virtue of me being closer. Still a bit, you know, regular 19 points away. So, so, you'll take so, the win. so I mean, this is, this is so ridiculous, you know, that... We're both it's so not, wrong. It's not about winning. It's just about not losing, Stevie. This is what you we need to lost. get to grips with this <laughs> game. And I lost by less, which means it's I'm winning. Nonsense. So we draw it up 1-1. Um, so taking nonsense. it into the Champions Cup final on Saturday. Um, and that was a Toulouse win by nine points, winning 22 points to 31. Um, Stevie, once again, my prediction was um, Leinster by five. Yours was Leinster by seven. The exact same margins. And look at us. Getting both predictions wrong, but I, I haven't got a single prediction right, but coming out on top. You know, this is nonsense. I, this is... I don't make the rules, I just enforce them, bro. Um, I mean, this so... is a bigger burglary than United winning the FA Cup and getting Europa League, dude. Come on. <laughs> and, and, and criminal that we haven't that, had that as a part of the prediction show, alas. Yeah. Um, Which I would have, and I would have backed United. You would have gone with City and <laughs> I would have won the weekend. I'm actually yeah, very I've... upset about this. On a point no, of order, I'm taking this up with management. We, I need to have a chat with our producer. You think that's by chance, bro? You think that's yeah. by chance? Um, but essentially, that that takes it to from a nine six to nine seven game. The comeback is firmly on. If you've been here before, it was an eight two, I believe, at a stage. Um, so this is massive, and the race to fifteen is well and truly on. Um, Stevie, I look forward to looking at you in that Arsenal shirt, um, and I and I'm building a, a slow fan pace um, behind me here. But before we move any further, let's jump right into the rugby and no better place to start um, than the Sharks' redemption story coming true for their season, them winning the Challenge Cup. Talk to me about it. Uh, you know, as I said, as you know, I found I can basically, you know, go through exactly what the the, the, the the Sharks have done in that they have managed to salvage what should have been one of the most ridiculously bad seasons ever. Um and they did it in the most ridiculous fashion. I mean, we predicted a Gloucester victory, and those first ten minutes, I said they're going, "Yep, this is this is kind of what I expected to see." And they didn't concede a point. The urban uh, knee, knee slide turned it all the around. Knee slide. Then that first scrum, and from that first scrum, I think that was the the gauntlet thrown down. That was it. Um, phenomenal performance from the Sharks. Uh, you know, I I said it all week. I said. If they're going to win, it's going to take an 80-minute performance, and we haven't seen an 80-minute performance from the Sharks throughout the season. Um, maybe it was about a 75-minute performance. They didn't yeah, see it was more, I was going to say, that so, they actually, so, they, they did what South African teams do best and took points where they could because Sia Masuku yeah. off the tee was just, I think he missed one kick on the day, but he was lethal. And yeah. they had scored, I think, you know, two tries that had hurt Gloucester, but it was really just those penalties and, and particularly the scrum penalties that were just yeah. hurting them. And Masuku was just knocking them over. I mean, they were up by like more, they were up by more than um, two converted tries and still so going for yeah. points. And it just extended and extended. It was um, finals rugby, wasn't it? You know, it was no, just 100%. And every, time, every time you had an opportunity, just build the lead, build the lead, build the lead. And, and Gloucester, absolutely. just every single time they made a mistake, were made to pay for it. And, and that's yeah. what, and it's so sapping to just watch that scoreboard yeah. get further and further away from you, even though you don't feel you're playing that badly. Yeah. Um, but you're just not in the game. Yeah, it was a weird game because you, you, Gloucester weren't out of it, actually. You mentioned they started very strong. Um, and, and cheap as I, I was fortunate enough to be at the game and what a stadium it was in, an amazing atmosphere. Um, I had to, I not not a Sharks fan by any means, but cheap as I was, a, I was a Sharks fan on Friday just because I I was having to um, defend the some of the Boca boys um, mm. for against some of the the palms that were in the stands as they would be um, being it in London, but um, the the Gloucester team just looked so strong off the gate. Mm. It was really a little bit worrying to be a Sharks fan. It was one of those where. When they kept them out, it was just, just get away with this without conceding even more than three. Yeah. If you concede three, even that's fine because they were running wild in the beginning and, and in it for large portions of the game. But um, Sharks just capitalized out of nowhere. See, I mean, that, that, that um, Pepsi Butelezi try. Oh. Yeah, I know. Unreal. 
scored it right in front of me. I mean, the the dummy, the handoff, the even just the pickup from the offload from oh, Vincent Cox. Pace. Turn of pace, like that is absolutely quality. And he's putting his name right up there in terms of emerging um, South African, um, you know, loose forwards that are that are going to be in the mix in the next couple of years. And if he continues to put in performances like that, particularly on the biggest stage, um, mm. there's no way that he'll continue um, to be ignored. Yeah, look, I think, yeah, for me, it was, again, big, big performance from big players. You know, Springbok front row were unmatched. Um, yeah. The one every single time was a scrum, was a scrum penalty, even with another massive game. Yeah. The you know the, the cream rises to the crop is, is is what they always say, and and in the finals, you know, you need your big players to stand up, and I think that was what happened. Um, you know, I thought it was a very quiet game for a lot of the sharks backline, but that pack um, stood so tall. There were some there were some big moments. I mean, that one turnover from Vincent Suka, absolutely clutch. Uh, Pace put Lazy's try. Gebrand Krobla I thought was really good as well. Yeah. I James mean, Chutuka's actually up, had an out. incredible second half to the season. Yeah. Considering this is his first season um, at the Sharks, like to join in a pretty, um, you know, roller coaster season, to say the least. Um, the second, I think. He, second season for the Sharks. But... Is it his second season? Yeah, I was first, thinking. That... First season was very blighted by injury. Um, right. So, um, yeah. So, well, he's really, really in there. Of, Stamped his mark, though. I mean, you look back at the the try that won them the semi final. That was all his offload. That then got yeah. the ball down the wing to um, Mafimpi, who scored the try. Another try scorer. Um, but we got to speak about um, Masuku, not just his kicking, but his gameplay. Got two tries. I mean, ridiculous. Just he he reminds me so the temperament of Lukanya Am. Just looks like nothing worries him. Just yeah. resting heart rate of about forty. Um, yeah, just, just 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 going about his business. Never rush. Yeah, going never, about his business. Never... Wearing the shoulder pads as per getting it done. Yeah. The secret recipe that no one else is no one else is talking about. No one else has quite realised that this is actually the reason why Siemasuka can just cook. He's secretly a, he's secretly a hockey player and just hates yeah. playing rugby, but he's just talented, bro. He's there Correct. just because he needs to be. Yep. No, and and and. Genuinely, I think a very serious chance of of being handed that um, that Bok jersey for that Wales game if if the right sort of teams, for example, and players aren't available. Because I think you know why not? Um, and I did a video that was released today earlier on on Fair Sports saying he's just got Springbok written all above all over him. And it's difficult because you know you do maybe sometimes have to take a step back and you know, this is his first season at this kind of level. He needs to play a lot mm. more at this level. You know uh, yeah. the Sharks have continued to be pretty poor at URC level. Um, where he has picked up some really good performances as well, but you know, so obviously the consistency. But also, sharks and, were and, sharks were very bad in the first half of the season when he wasn't playing. Yes, yes, um, he has but, been I mean, the, a, a large part of them turning of, around of, their of, season. Yeah, exactly. Like Butter Chamberlain is, and Kerwin Bosch weren't weren't conducting well, the troops well, they as they should. They as you need to fly off continue to. to back. It just Kerwin actually course. goes to show, you know, there's so much talk of like you know, the fly-off being like the quarterback of a, of a rugby yeah. team and, and dictating play. And, you know, this is the best example kind of we have in recent history yeah. where you can just see what well, I think I think two players. Conductor. Yeah, I think two players have completely changed their season. Him and the man of the match on Friday, Vincent Koch. Yeah, Vincent Koch. I mean, the He's man's been... kicking 50-22s. Yeah, and, uh, what and can he do? You know, when, when, you're, when your prop's kicking 50-22s, you know you got, you got the rub of the green on the night. And, and, and yeah, the Sharks correct. did... To be fair, there was a bit of criticism um, from Matthew Reynal, but I think for the most part, you know, they they, they deserved everything they got, um, yeah. and and they, they were dominant. and And fair play to them. You listen, I, I was um, all over them. You know, they started releasing their redemption story before they had really yeah. redeemed themselves. Was it chasing the fin or something stupid. Yeah, chasing the fin, and, and it was a bit of a mockery when it started, and. You know what I mean? It, it takes balls to put it out there before you've actually gone and done it, and they have yeah. gone and done it. So you you got to get take your hat off to them. Um, and and I mean they'll they'll be playing in the URC this weekend, but I imagine um, you know not very right. present in, in terms of at least yes. the, the regular starting lineup. Um, but yeah, I mean you you got to say well done to Marco Mazzotti as well. He was handing out ski masks at the end of what the game. What is this whole trend of ski masks all of a sudden? I mean, yeah, it's, it's the and Americanization of sports. It's just it's, it's bizarre. <laughs> I, it's I find it very funny. You know, you're gonna you're gonna uh, my one dream and hope is to see Quentin de Kock wearing a ski mask for winning a, a trophy for the Proteus, bro. That's all. That's all I want to see in life. Um, yeah, it's. 
But let, let, let's move on um, swiftly then to the action on Saturday, which was in the Champions Cup, you know, the, the creme de la creme of club rugby. Um, yeah. And the two um, monumental teams of Leinster and Toulouse taking on one another. Um, Toulouse obviously coming out on top, a crazy game. Um, extra time. I mean, extra time. When was the last time you saw a game going? The last 30 yeah. seconds. Um, I was hoping for a kickoff. That would have been yeah. unbelievable. But to yeah. lose going and winning by nine in the end, it looks like a crazy high scoring affair when you look at it um, on the face of it. But 15 points apiece, purely penalties. Yeah. Um, two, I think all three actually disallowed tries, I think, in regular time. Um, just a, an absolute, um, you know, just in, in an arm lock with one another. Um, going back and forth, but could have been a completely different conversation had Kieran Florey knocked over that drop goal. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because um, now it's like, well, have Leinster choked again and stuff, and and mm. so the game of margins is, is unbelievable, isn't it? Uh, but what I think we did see is we did see the two best club teams in the world uh, going yeah. going toe to toe. The the quality no, no on doubt. display, the the players on display. I mean, we talked about. I mean, we'll talk about Anton Dupont in a bit, but I mean, Javis Gibson Park, for example, continues to to. Press no, me. I mean, there's, the tackle to, to take to punt out. Yeah, to you just, them from you're, scoring. Just, you're just watching the best play, some of the best players in the world, um, you know, going at each other for, for 80 minutes and then even longer. So, but again, Leinster, I tell you what, this is becoming a, a story of the greatest team that never was. A little bit like the Iron team. I don't want to go too far down there. <laughs> But, um, so into it. yeah, I, I, I mean, it, the, they just, it's they're not picking up silverware head. for, yeah, they're just not picking up silverware. It's, you know, it's, they haven't won a trophy it's, since COVID. It's it's a, a team riddled with world class players and generational players. You know, the World Rugby Player of the Year is Josh van der Fleer. To be fair, he didn't even start um, this weekend. But the Jamie Gibson Park, you know, everyone's speaking about him as the top five rugby player in the world. It's a pity you can't call him the best scrum up in the world because he's competing against who is the best player in, in world rugby at the moment. Um, but it, it, Kalen Doris, you know, the, the Taj Furlong, these are these are people that will be remembered forever. And they, in theory, had very small moments gone differently in three different games in the last three years. They could be treble. You know, yeah, they could be three peat winners. Three, three finals and not a single victory. And including a final last year in the Aviva. I mean, obviously, that was the one that was just set up for them. But... Yeah, three finals, no trophies, all against the, the French last... as well. All against yeah, the French, and, and you have to go all the way. You look back at 2019, 2019, losing that one to Saracens. So they've they've not won this since 2018. And for a side that has won four of these, um, of which they won, I believe, two back to back, uh, back in the beginning of the so I think it was 2010. Um, they've just they sh- for all they that they've should got have a lot more stars side. in their chest, yeah, yeah. Um, and what are we saying? So Jacques Nienaba, as sitting currently as a assistant coach slash physio, he was there on the sidelines Had during the, the game. Pr- promote him up to promote him up to head coach, or just bring him back to the box, bro. It's, Mission well, failed. Uh, Return. Yeah, home. yeah, it was nice. It was a nice trend, to Jacques. Unlucky. Next time, um, you can come. We'll to just the go line, learn actually. everything about the whole island team and come in. Yeah. Um, in in the next just in three just years come time. just come coach for the Lions, you know, just come come and sort them out. Um yeah, but and and again, it's 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 such a weird thing. People complain. I saw your comments about you know how it's so unacceptable that he was running water and stuff like that. First of all, by the way, he's a qualified physio. Yeah. So he can be a medic. He's not just putting on the verb, he is a qualified uh, medical professional. Um why is rugby so afraid of coaches coaching their players? Yeah, it boggles my mind. It absolutely boggles my mind. It's 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 like if is this not going to make your product better? The product. Well, imagine you think I so. want to see I want to see Steve Hansen and Russi Erasmus on the field at the same time, on, on maybe even line. shouting at each other. Mid, exactly. While they're telling their scrum what they're going to do, you know what I mean? That's box office. I want to see yeah. the biggest personalities if they're on the field. Does that not make their product better? What What are you prohibiting? You have they have a walkie talkie that they're speaking to to relay messages. Like, so just what if they want to do that in field. person? Yeah. What if, I mean, in in you know, you look at like NFL. It's not tennis the where there's a rule there. against coaching, which I also think is crazy, but that's a whole different yeah, discussion. But, yeah, it's just I don't understand. You know, just 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 let let 
let them coach. Like, why, why, I don't, why are we so fixated about and worried about coaches being so far away from the game and stuff like that? Just put a little technical area, let them stroll up and down. Again, yeah, I want to see, I want to see, uh, Imagine back in the days and you had your, you know, like Eddie Jones, you know, versus like a – trying to think of a, of a, of a good matchup here. Uh, a Michael Checker versus Eddie Jones. Yeah, yeah, on, yeah, on a little touchline yeah, yeah, bust-up. Yeah. I mean, this is what we need, you know? Exactly, exactly, exactly. Like exchange some words. Yeah, Gatlin uh, Rassi during the Edition Arch Lions series. Yeah, him and Gatlin, you know what I mean? Yeah. They, let them let them argue. Like, and uh, as you said, at the end of the day, it's like the, the product itself. It's going to yeah. be better. It's about the theatre. We want the theatre. Yeah. yeah, like try gatekeep, um, you know, coaches from coaching. It's like, what? Yeah. We've lost our minds a little bit. But, I mean, Stevie, the big topic discussion we need to get onto, and, and, and we've got to discuss the man himself who might become an Olympic champion. He will become an Olympian, um, you know, barring some, um, you know, injury of Injuries, sorts. But yeah. Antoine Dupont. I mean, let's just quickly cover his his Heineken Champions Cup. Carries 125. Ranked in the Champions Cup, first. Offloads, 21, first. Turnovers, turnovers. Scrum off, turnovers, first. Meters made, 594, second. Um, defenders beaten, 25, third. Again, a scrum off. Defenders beating, what? Um, try scored, fourth. I mean, the, the stats are ridiculous and... You know, he he is just everything that to lose um, needed to get over the line, and he's everything that world rugby needs to like get by and from from the rest of the world into what this product can be because he is an absolute freak of nature. Um, some people even discussing him as the greatest of all time. I'm interested in to hear your thoughts on on that. Um, well, my biggest thought about this is the fact that he's 27 years old. Still got potentially two he's, World Cups he's, left. Yeah, he's been playing for less than 10 years at this level. You know, he, he made his French debut in 2017. And we're talking about a guy who's only just gone past 50 caps for his country being one of the best players of all time because he is just I don't think there's been a good. player but, that has played that has been as naturally talented and just makes the game look as easy as it does. You know, when it comes to go debates, you know, it, it, it'll always depend on what he wins. And that's always gonna be a factor. Mm-hmm. And he's doing but, it for club, right? He's yeah, so he's doing club. it for club. So he's, he's and, and again if he goes to sevens and he just decides to pick that up, I mean they've got what, three top fourteens. Is this is they sec- it's the second European Cup he's won. Um, if he goes, he won, he, up, I mean, he, the French, the French won their first sevens series in like what over ten plus years when he played, uh, some, ever. like a couple, a couple months ago, ever, e- ever. I mean, it, it's one, one the Six Nations. So he so does have. I think the the only two things he needs to really uh, the, the big one is obviously the World Cup, right? And yeah. and you know he'll look. And all the French players will look back at this last World Cup and 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 look at what could have been. Um, that is obviously the earmark. While you know, if we think of other contenders, you look at like the Jonah Loams of this world, um, Dan Carter's, Ch- Chase and Colby. In terms of like, <laughs> have you seen Chase and Colby's on the list? No, he can't be. He he hasn't. Okay, it. let 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 me educate you, Mister Dan Scholtz. Okay, talk to me because Chase I don't and think Colby. you can get Ches and Colby near a, a, an all-time greats list because I don't think he's even all right. played, has he played fifty caps for the Springboks? Uh, no, exactly. Are you ready? Talk to me. Two thousand fourteen Curry Cup winner. Wolf okay. to good starcher. Uh, Accessible uh, only by one country in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Um, Champions Cup winner. In 2021, top 14 double winner. 2019, 2021, uh, Challenge Cup, Cup winner. So that was uh, that was a to lose. Then a top to Challenge Cup winner last year. Uh, for South Africa, he has won a rugby championship, two times World Cups, a British and Irish Lions series, um, the Qatar Airways Cup. <laughs> the Qatar it, Airways. It is, it is listed over here 
Not okay. to mention an Olympic no, bronze you medal. Me. You lost me. You lost me. Oh, that's true, actually. But I did forget thank about you. the bronze. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, before you... Th- Double World goal, Cup winner and, a, and, a, and, a, and an Olympic no. medalist. Yeah. As well as a Champions Cup winner, as well as two domestic titles for France, as well as a Challenge Cup and a British yeah. and Irish Lion Series. I do think you look... <laughs> when, 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 you know, looking to the greatest of all times, you have to look at... Um, game defining and game changing players not just in their era but over the course and i do think Ches and colby no i would put him in the to be fair actually but... had the part set actually that was going to be a lie because i was going to say he was going to be the the one who broke the mold of the small rugby player breaking it in but it wasn't actually him it was Brenton Pulser and it was um Gio Aplon though they blazed the trail for Ches and colby and I'm not taking anything from Chase and Colby. I love Chase and Colby. Don't are you are you mad? But yeah, yeah. I, I I don't think you can I don't think you can compare him to the Dan Carters of, of no. This but world. he is. I think I think he is officially one of, if not the most decorated rugby players ever. No, for sure. And there's that you can have the most decorated and and the best ever. That's yeah. different. Alas, we 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 digress. Know, diver, that we digress from 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 the original argument. I think. The point is, we're looking at a man in DuPont at the peak of his powers who's still yeah. got eight years of rugby left in him. What can he do with those eight years is essentially going to define whether he will be the greatest of all time because he's well on his way as it stands and there's really nothing holding him back from owning that title if he, if he's able to win. You know, he does, He needs to win one World Cup. One yeah. World Cup, and essentially that I think that earns him that that title. But you know, there's a lot of rugby to happen between now and two World Cups from now. Yeah, what we're really telling you is that every chance you get to watch Anthony Dupont do it because you're watching one of the best players to have ever touched a rugby ball. Literally, that and, is, and that it's is not, the main it's, thing. And the and the point is, it's not even when he's touching the rugby ball; it's the game awareness, the yeah. the, the fact that he's a number nine, a scrum half, and he's got the most. Joint most t- turnovers in the biggest club rugby competition in the world is just ludicrous. He had an intercept from Dan Sheehan in the final. Looked like he was off to the races, going to um, go score a try. Managed to get tackled. Who was the person who turned the ball over to win his team back the penalty? Dupont, who was he was the person who's you know who's um, pass it was was intercepted. So. Yeah. Even when he makes a mistake, he comes out with a penalty. This is the type Very of guy that, that that he is. Um, yeah, you can't keep him out of the game. Yeah, it, it's just, and when he's on, it's just you've got that extra ten percent chance of winning. Um, yeah. And speaking of winning teams, Steve, we've got to touch on on the Heineken, um, you know, team of the week, um, apparently. And this, um, I believe, was um, this was released by um i almost get this right just so they are accountable for this this is um released actually the, by the champions cup and official database powered by opta um, i think wasn't it opta stats um team yeah. of the week um and you know you're thinking in a game where 15 15 at 15, full 15, time yeah. leinster have a goal to win it could have gone on and won the game if they had knocked that over you know there'll be a pretty a pretty even matchup no, sir. 15 um, players out of 15 players. I'll go and walk you through every single one of the players, but just go look at the um, the Toulouse team because they yeah. won every single um, you don't need to. player. So they team just, of the week just... goes to Toulouse. Yeah, literally. And it, yeah, I think it's a bit childish, to be honest. Um, I thought I thought it was I thought it was a laugh. I, I thought it was I thought they were bantering Leinster, Leinster which could have been quite funny, but they are being by the looks of it totally serious which is which is hilarious yeah and, if, if, and as if you as if as if the leinster fans haven't been kicked enough in the last weekend to really piss them off and they decided to, to release that so that's wild it is wild um and uh, upon picking up player of the season as as per usual really so yeah a bit of a bit of shithousery there from the champions cup which draws an end to the champions cup it's been an, it's been an interesting season um but dan can we talk about the the, the best league in the league that we already care about because nobody cares about the challenge cup nobody cares about the champions cup it's all about the urc and it's all about it's all this about... weekend and stevie it's it's my boys versus your boys i'm sick yeah. of uh, you know one week supporting the sharks i'm done even them winning yeah. wasn't enough to to get me excited it's the Lions versus the Stormers this weekend, folks, and it's the last week, last um, 
group round of the URC, which defines who makes the playoffs and by virtue of that, who makes the, um, the Champions Cup next season, which has now been reduced to a top seven, not a top eight because of the Sharks winning the, yeah, um, Sharks, the Challenge Cup and them currently sitting in 13th in the URC, um, having won only four games. It's crazy winning in more games in a knockout competition than yeah. in, a, in a league competition. I mean, yeah, to think to think that they're going to probably, and I'm 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 putting down them down as a loss this weekend. They're going to win four out of eighteen games in the URC, and they're going to play in the Champions Cup next season. Yeah, and <laughs> uh, blame Siam Masuku, bro. There's only Fair one not, answer not, to it. Not not, not, um, not happy. But Stevie, quickly give us essentially the the games that everyone's got their eyes on is Benetton, Edinburgh, and Stormers line because those are really the defining fixtures yeah. for who makes the top eight. And then we'll get on to, um, you know, who makes one, two, and three. Um, yeah, yeah. coming. But let, let's start off with um, Benetton versus Edinburgh and Lions versus Stormers. And, and what are the chances of yeah. different teams making the playoffs here? Look, so I'll throw, I'll throw an Ulster there as well um, because there is a chance that uh, they could drop down. Um, but they have qualified. Um, so basically, the Stormers are through. You're happy if you're a Stormers player. You know you, you've got to the playoff stuff like that. Uh, Edinburgh, Benetton, Lions all sit on 49 points and 7, 8, and 9. Now, 7 and 8 go into the playoffs. 7 is a Champions Cup spot. So if a Lions, your ideal situation is grabbing 7 in the place, uh, qualifying for the playoffs as well as securing a place in the Champions Cup for next season. For that to happen, um, they will need to win with the bonus points, um, ideally. Um, uh, or else uh, they'll need Edinburgh and Benetton to draw, in which case just a win will be enough for the Lions. But should they win with the bonus point and either Benetton or Edinburgh do not win with the bonus point, the Lions will finish seventh. Um, the Lions will also finish seventh if Ulster uh, do not finish... Uh, well, they can actually even go up to sixth. If Ulster do not pick up a point at all, Again, Munster, and they remain at 53 Which points. Which is highly possible gets, because Munster will be yep. one to be protecting that top spot, potentially yep. a home um, quarter, semi, and final for them. So that, that's, that's, at home. that's going to be two full-strength teams. Correct. So that is an awesome opportunity. So basically what the Lions are going to do is the Lions have got to go out and win with a bonus point. Um, that, for me, should be enough for them to get into at least the, the top eight into playoffs because Edinburgh and Benson, one of them, will drop points. Um, so that's a, win, a bonus point win for the Lions guarantees mm-hmm. them a spot. In fact, a basically win for the Lions. Gar- really should guarantee them a spot in the in, in the next round. Um, yeah, so, so a win for the Lions gets, gets them into gets the top the eight and, and, and a bonus point win should get, get them, them or, or could possibly get them to seventh, which would then mean a Champions, a Champions Cup. Cup. And, and that we should clarify, that is because, I mean, Lions, Benison and Edinburgh are all sitting on 49 points, yeah. but it does not go to points difference where the Lions are to- well ahead of Benetton yeah. and Edinburgh, it goes, it goes to, to wins. Um, games one where the Lions have won one less than Benetton, two less than Edinburgh. I still yeah. Which is why, which is why, if, if Ulster win, for example, if Ulster get a point, um, and Edinburgh and Benetton get a bonus point victory, for example, then they'll be t- and as well as the Lions, they'll be tied uh, on points. But the Lions having one one game fewer would then be be the de facto eight place stevie we're speaking about this like the lions are playing zebra at home but we're talking about the stormers away my well, you stormers... also, also got stripes on your on your kit so you have this as well <laughs> and and you know all stormers are really playing for is to cement their their position in fifth which to be honest isn't a lot but it's to make sure that they don't don't slide down but also as we've mentioned previously in other episodes there's been a bit of a break a week yeah. away from URC. You're going to go into the knockout soon. You actually want to have your players playing as regularly as possible. It's not like they're coming off the back of a game and going straight in. So I do see a very strong Stormers team um, playing this weekend. Not an important enough game to risk any knocks in terms of players are not fully fit. So you're, you know, for example, um, Talks about Sasha Femi Gomzulu, you know, potentially carrying a knock and stuff like that. If a player is carrying the knock, you're not sacrificing. Obviously, Willem's out injured, but that's for the rest yeah. of the season, anyways. 
Um, yeah, you, you, you I predict to, you, a very high scoring game in this one. It's two teams who I think are going to go at it. I think the Stormers are going to be desperate to try and finish with the win. The Lions, we know the Lions are going to be desperate for, for, yeah. for and they know like, they likely the points. Stormers' last home game of the season as well. So yeah. there'll be a big crowd there. Um, they love playing a bit of razzle dazzle at home, and to an extent where they don't almost respect the opposition enough. We saw what happened at Ospreys where. You know, they were so dominant and really could have won the game if they had played, you know, just rugby that was dominant and, and kept the ball a little closer, although they were you know, so expansive and actually paid the price. But it's almost like, you know, it's un, unwavered by the, the opposition and, and, and the scenario. So I, I agree. I think I think a lot of points points in this one this weekend. Yeah, uh, I, th- I think it's been an interesting one. Um, I think other than that, Sharks, Bulls, I think will be a bit of a walkover. Bulls desperate to first Bulls of all make sure they finish at least getting, second. Uh, potentially winning first. Yeah, they could get first. Munster slip up, so it's there for them. So they'll go full strength because uh, yeah. they don't want to slip away. Because at the moment, if they do finish second, then obviously means that they win their quarterfinal. They will have a home semi, yeah, which will make a huge, huge difference. Um, and I think the Sharks. We think we all know the Sharks have been on the Jolly Patrolly, and we're going to see basically the Sharks carry this weekend. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I saw a paid uh, uh, advertisement from Evan Etzebeth for um, for Brandy this afternoon. So there's yeah. only one there's only one train that those oaks are on, and those oaks are getting um, boozed or continuing to get boozed throughout yeah. the week. Um, so we we're, not, we're not see, we're not seeing the, this weekend. No, no, no. They um, yeah they they they've been on the Brandy for the last few days. We're going to be seeing um, essentially what we will probably be seeing is like the you know Kern Bosch All Stars. Yeah, true. Give Kevin Bosch a start, bro. Why not? What's um, well, yeah, and, and and like put a Chamberlain like his last game, I suppose the Sharks potentially. Yeah, you know, these true. these kind of things. True, um, but I think the craziest part of this all is that Leinster are playing, and they're currently sitting in third, which to them is, you know, blasphemy it's in the mm-hmm. URC now that they haven't won the uh, the um, Champions Cup. They're going to be coming, um, you know, oh, for that with URC. They're seeing have a bit to of just... red. But yeah. with a six-day turnaround from the Champions Cup final to playing on Friday night in a an important game for Leinster, as it is for Ulster, um, it's just ridiculous, though, Stevie. I mean, I'd feel a lot more sympathy if it wasn't Leinster. It is Correct. Leinster, so, you know, they, they, they win enough and they've been disrespecting this competition to the <laughs> extent where it's come back to disrespect them. But... I mean, just horrible, horrible planning from um, from the URC. The fact that Leinster, the one team who played this last weekend, um, yeah, gets a Friday kickoff. You know, gets get, gets a Friday um, kickoff um, is just ridiculous. Um, yeah. So they're probably not going to have a. I mean, I imagine maybe one or two big names, but it's going to have to be the B team, which is a good team for Leinster. Um, they're going to have to go against Ulster, so that's going to be. A massive one on Friday night. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting one. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean Leinster, pff, yeah, they'll be hurting. Um, so it'll be interesting to see the team they do put out. Um, I suppose the one thing is that they have not necessarily. I mean, they've been playing stronger teams the last few weeks, but they, you know, they did have a bit of a break with that South African leg. So maybe some of their players are mm. more rested up. So it might be a little bit of a hybrid of a couple of key players that they feel they need yeah. to try and get over the line play. Um, but it's it's just a, it's a very interesting URC table. Um, and and it's been such a cool season that I'm just, yeah it's, I think hopefully we'll have the perfect end this weekend. Absolutely. Um, and Stevie, moving over to the English Premiership, we've got the semi-finals they're already in the knockouts um, stage of the season. We've got the Northampton Saints on Friday night hosting Saracens. Um, that's um, going to be blockbuster. Northampton um, who finished top, and Saracens somehow um, finishing fourth in. In, in the in the league table, kind of losing on the on the final day to sail to to um, fall down there, and then we've got on Saturday Bath hosting um, Sale, who, as mentioned, um, just crept into the top four and or not just the top four, I guess the top three, um, going into the last ones. It feels like it's Northampton's to lose, but then again, Sarri. Uh, but there's um, there's rugby there's rugby heritage. There's rugby heritage, but I do actually think that it's better off for them playing them in the semi-finals and the finals. Yeah. They'll have home ground advantage um, mm-hmm. and possibly less pressure than a final at Twickenham. Players playing as 
um, they would, you know, regularly in a in a group stage yeah. game. Um, you know, it's less of the hype and you know the um, everything that goes on that, that that is a final at Twickenham. So I, I do, and I, and I hope in Northampton are able to get it done. Yeah, no, it'd be very cool to see it done. Um, uh, it is going to be an interesting one. I mean, Sarah's beauty using a couple of players. Um, the likes, but also, I mean, Courtney Laws, you know, he's, he's finishing his time at Northampton. Owen Farrell's finishing his time at Saracen. So it's an interesting yeah. weekend ahead. Uh, Bath, you know, Finn Russell, the GOAT, putting strings there. Can he lead them to a, to a potential title? Keen to see that as Thomas well. Thomas the Toy, the GOAT, bro. Thomas the Toy, yeah. Look at it. Look, look at the season he's had. So, but lots of South Africans on display. You'll see Joano Augustus uh, for Northampton. Obviously, the yeah. prayers in and around that sales side. Um, as and, as and- mentioned, the Thomas the Toy for Bath. We need to speak about Springbok number eight because we have lost our, um, you know, our success. Our succession plan was uh, Jasper Visa coming in for the retired Dwayne Vermeulen, and he goes ahead and gets a five-match ban for a tip tackle um, or tip clear out. I'm not sure how you would define it, but yeah, a bit of a weird um, one. And now everyone's, you know, looking left, right. There's Evan Ruiz who seems to be there and thereabouts, but also can't stop getting um, penalized and, and pretend yellow cards during games. So, you know, people are calling for Augustus to come back there. Uh, now Pepsi Butelezi had the game that he has. Is he going to potentially uh, make it up? So that, that number eight um, in the green and gold jersey is well up for grabs now with the um, Jasper Visa uh, ban that's come into effect. Yeah, I spoke a, bit, a little bit last week in terms of what, what the options are. Um, and, and, you know, you've got, for example, Quacker Smith as well. Um, and, and you know, are they mm-hmm. to start him? Will they continue to bring him off well, the bench? Will Quacker Smith start a Springbok again? At eight. Uh, yeah. Is it well, possible? I think he's done it. I think he did it against... Um, he might have started Georgia. a British Irish Lions game, you know? No, I think British Irish Lions, he was, if you did play, played off the bench. But at, at uh, that Georgia game in the in the pre-match mm-hmm. series, I think he just started mm-hmm. eight. Um, it's, yeah, it's, play eight. One. it's just whether Rassi will actually use him as a starter or not. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be that's that's a very interesting one. And then I think you know that's the nice thing about the last couple of games. You got a lot of South African eights who are trying to put their hands up and just try to throw their last little roll of the dice, would have put them on mm-hmm. the on the on the radar there to to Um Rassi before that squad, which will be announced next weekend. Huge, absolutely massive, and no doubt we'll be speaking about that when it comes out. Stevie, let's move over to the football for this week. Um, we had arguably the biggest upset of the season. Leverkusen losing their first game of the season in their second last game of the season to Atalanta in the final. Um, and it was a Lookman masterclass, the former Fulham man with a hat-trick um, in the 12th, 28th and 75th minute and a bloody good hat-trick at that um, to beat Leverkusen in the final, um, not getting... You know, I don't know what you call it. I guess you know. Usually, it's I'd say like a golden. Um, you know, you get the golden trophy yeah. if you win it. Get an unbeaten league season. Maybe they'll get the platinum. They would have got the platinum one, doing what no other football team was going to be able to do. And unfortunately, their loss um, to Atalanta was there. And I thought it would be difficult for them. Yeah. I'm not sure if I mentioned it on the pod. I feel like I did, but I thought it was there for Atalanta to take and fair. Bloody play to Atlanta. Atlanta when good they, side. They're very, when they got very, Liverpool in the quarterfinals, they I think they win chances of winning the whole thing was sitting at below ten percent, and they mm. got written off. Everyone got told it was Liverpool was going to beat them, and then when they beat that, no one cared about anyone but Leverkusen, and they've gone and won three 0 in the final. As you said, a hard team to beat, um, and these, I think that makes it seven. Um, six or seven teams that could potentially qualify from Italy in the Champions League mm-hmm. next season because of how well they've done, um, which is pretty ludicrous um, when you think about it. Um, and we've got the um, Conference League tonight, Stevie, Olympiacos, Florentina. We're talking yeah, about just kicked off. ultra fans versus ultra fans. Um, yeah. And you, you'll, you'll know the result by the time we release this, but... Um, it's always it's always good to watch these European finals, um, and there's no no one bigger than than the one coming up this weekend. Yeah, so yeah, I think I'm actually I was busy looking at it, yeah, the fact that the Fiorentina one's just yeah, look, the Leverkusen one. I think I'm not I'm not overly so, it, it is kind of, it was always going to come to an end, wasn't it? And and I, and this athletic side, I've watched them a bit over the last few years, and they've they've been growing into into a side yeah. that can. That can upset team. I mean, they had some very nice Serie A campaigns. I think. As well. I think in the nice COVID year, they made they made they made a Champions League semi final. If I'm not 
uh, incorrect in, in, in during COVID year. I think they got knocked out in PSG um, in the in the semifinals of the Champions League. It was either that yeah, or I quarterfinals. Think, yeah, um, it but was they went bloody like far. They had that insane run. Um, they went very far. It was, it was, I think it was, was quarterfinals. Yeah. Um, um, but so they've they've been a, they've been a team on the rise. So it was it was cool yeah. to see them go and get and get silverware. Uh, and yes, maybe it's Europa, but silverware, silverware. It's a European title. Yeah, their, their um, first trophy in sixty years. Yeah. Um, speaking of winning trophies, <laughs> are we are we ready to have the conversation that uh, United oh, had a season no. Liverpool? Okay. Well, <laughs> I was prepping for you to. To dog all the Arsenal Arsenal listeners of the of the podcast, and I was about to jump in in defence of them, and now you've gone after my heart, bro. Don't go after Jurgen. Don't go after Norbert, bro. This is not on. Um, the answer is no, but um, do continue oh, you, and, so, and so inform it, everyone of what happened this weekend. Well, first of all, you know, football heritage, Manchester United versus Man City. Uh, if you've seen the videos, it was all over when City rocked up in T-shirts and Manchester United went full suits before the game and after to that it was fair, done. To be fair, I do think there's a, there's a bigger loss ratio to those to, to the teams that rock up in suits. You, you, you've got to just... I mean, I think City rocked up in track suits because that's what they've been jawling in since winning the Premier League last weekend. Hey, there's a high hey. correlation between, but, 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 between the amount of hours they've been drinking and the chances of them losing. Yeah, well, you know, at the end of the day, the, the next generation, uh, you know, clutching up for, for United. Alejandro gone natural and Kobe Maney with the goals. A uh, bit of a sweaty last uh, 10, 15 minutes. But United with a 2-1 win. Ten Hag, two seasons, two trophies. So we had you had the Carabao last season. Mm-hmm. FA Cup this season. Yeah. I think we both know and it's I don't want to season and what, there's Champions what, what League season after. Oh, okay, so it's okay, the okay, Premier League okay. next season. But <laughs> you know you know what's nuts? And, and and this was going to be my defense if you came after Arsenal and I don't feel like I need to defend Liverpool because I think everyone knows you know, that there's a separation at the moment. Yeah, no, it's so moment. much better coming third but, and winning no ch- and but, winning, winning a Carabao. It is, okay, and I know you would take that instead of what you had, but what I'm saying is United fans have come out of the woodwork, hiding... No, we've been here. We've been catching all... abuse for a long time. There's been man, daylight dude. savings for United Imagine fans Imagine a Liverpool fan recently. saying this. You guys didn't exist 10 years ago when you're busy slipping, slippy G and all the things. Don't come here with your nonsense. We've been there before. No, but what I'm saying is you've been, <laughs> you've been highly quiet and all of a sudden better than Arsenal. I don't know. Better Arsenal, better season than Arsenal. But it's not though. That's the thing. I know if you had the choice, whose season would you choose? Whose season would you choose? Dude. If you were to be an Arsenal or Man United fan this season, there's no way you're choosing Man United. Man United are on a worse path than Arsenal, than a worse path than Liverpool. They but are not on a trophies, good path. You played trophies, a drunk Man trophies. City team. I don't, 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 you know, it doesn't say on the trophy, you know, drunk City team. It just says Manchester United on the trophy. Ten but Hag with more papering, trophies than Arteta. Papering, Come on! It's papering over cracks that... Well, maybe there are know, cracks. You, you, Maybe holding, the, maybe maybe it's a already. broken house together. Look at with what happened tape, with Real Madrid bro. when Real Madrid had that terrible, terrible season and then they flipped a Champions League win. That's tough. It was papering over the track. Then they went and won it like three times in a row. We're on let's, the up let, here. Let, let, let's not compare this this United team winning a FA Cup to you know a Champions League winning Real team because in, incomparable, really. But uh, all I'm saying is. Don't be surprised when United are in the exact same position this time next season without the FA Cup. And you you know what I mean? There, there, there's no... Well, the Liverpool you know, Reigns done. and Garnacho so are still the only people nah, that are nah, nah, you know, nah, trying, next, trying to work. Next season is going to be a completely different season. Liverpool's done. And you guys are back in a rebuilding phase. Um, Arsenal are going to be done because mentally they're now nowhere after two seasons of coming up short. Uh, City are going to get relegated off their 145 charges. <laughs> Aston Villa have already tanked their season by handing Una Emery a five-year contract. We know how that ends. And uh, Spurs are Spurs. So I'm confident for next season. Charles, bro. Got to watch yeah. out for Charles. Charles. Well, Charles is the new manager now as well. Back into it's a Chelsea rebuild. Chelsea and United to lose is what you're saying. Yeah, correct. Correct. If you have money, put them on those two. 
Yeah, I mean, the only um, hopeful prospect of, of, of that is actually sitting in City getting relegated. That would be delightful. Um, but yeah, the, the result does um, change things a little bit in terms of um, European qualification. It takes United into the Europa, um, which was the plan all along, right? You, you and Sharks just like skipping your way to the yeah. top. Um, so I've told you, you I told you the Europa, the Europa Thursdays. League. What a, what, a, what a cool league, dude! Nice bar, nice, <laughs> nice, nice brand Market colors, so nice, well, bro. <laughs> nice, nice little anthem there, dude. I'm in for it. No, I think I think you've gassed it up, knowing full and well that that was possibly going to be an, a, a competition you were in. So now, now you're speaking yourself into, um, yeah, well. you know, a, a great position. But now Chelsea Suffering from success. Slipped. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> clearly. Um, but Chelsea slipping into the the Conference League for next season, and now nothing for Newcastle. Which isn't necessarily the worst thing for them. I, I think mean, it's the I think it's the best result for Newcastle. To be honest, I think they need to get it back onto the back on track. They also the, their squad was thin. They had lots of inju- injuries this last mm. season, so I think you know ha- having a bit of a breather from it. Listen, the conference would be a pretty epic tournament for Newcastle to go after, and I think it will be great watching that journey. Um, but. Yeah, it's you know, a conference. It's like it's not the end of the world if if you um if you don't qualify. Um, yeah. But they'll be there and thereabouts. I, I think they'll be back um next season. But there's still one more game left in the season. Season, Stevie. The big one. The mm. big one. Dortmund versus Real Madrid Champions League final, Wembley Stadium. There are um, banners. There are stages. And there are fan parks being set up in London Town. Um, as we currently speak ready for a heck load of germans to arrive yeah, let's let's, in, let's hear it how, how are you how are you spending it um probably in the pub in the pub. or at the fan park i haven't decided yet maybe i'll yeah. go to wembley who knows <laughs> <laughs> me me i'll, I'll become a I'll become a dorton fan and a more, dorton more than a dorton fan or jaden sancho fan um, because he is the one person who has got a point to prove. I mean, we didn't even touch on him last week when we spoke about the um, the exemptions from the English Euro squad. Um, Stevie, talk to me. What if Sancho scores a hat trick? Is um, you you got that? That means Southgate has got to be shaking in his boots, right? Um. And I know, I know you're a ten, ten hog defendant, Sancho. No, 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 should have no, obeyed I, the rules. I, but I mean, but Sancho, Sancho, Sancho struggled for a while in, in in an England shirt as well. Um, I think he's also you know sometimes struggled to translate that to to internationals. I, I'm very interested to see. Yeah, I, I think it's a strange. I, I, again, I think he, look, he doesn't. It doesn't help that he's a bit more sort of midfielder-ish than out and out wing, and you've just got you know players like that in that England squad coming up more than you need to deal with. He's competing with. Saka, right? Saka and Foden. Well, assuming you're going to play him in the right wing, but often when he's played for England, he's played in the midfield, in which case he's trying to compete with a Madison, uh, you know, even a, a, a Foden, a Grealish, for example. So yeah. there's there's just so much competition in that if you are anything higher than a deep-line midfielder for England, you are in trouble because there is a silly amount of depth um, when it comes to attacking players for, for England. So, yeah, I don't know if they'll necessarily miss him because I think they've got such good good depth, but this is a chance to try and, you know, prove a point to Ten Hag, prove a point to Southgate. Mm, um, mm, if he drops mm. an absolute stink and then everyone's going to turn around and go, well... So, I think, listen, for him, there's him. nothing to lose, right? The, the Dortmund have um, been somewhat written off um, in the final, I mean, when you come up against Madrid, that does tend to happen. You are rich north, yeah. You know, the, the, I've been there twice as a Liverpool fan. Um, you know, just it's it's two heartbreaking affairs for different reasons in 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 the last you know five six years. But they they are the definition of European royalty. Fourteen mm-hmm. Champions Leagues under the belt, looking to make it fifteen. Um, Dortmund, I think they've won a one or two. They definitely won one. Um, but looking to send out Marco Royce with a memory that he nor anyone else will forget. Um, and I personally think they're sitting exactly where they want to be. I think they're incredibly strong defensively. Um, I think they it, it'll be about legs. I, I, to be fair, even the the um, Madrid team has, has some aging legs in there. They barely got to um, penalties when they played City. Um, when they got through on penalties. Um, so, 
you're looking at, I mean, two teams who've been in amazing, amazing form in, the, in this tournament. Um, you know, Madrid winning La Liga, Dortmund, I think, barely coming in top four um, in Bundesliga, <clears throat> but having, um, you know, causing a lot of upsets um, in the Champions League and, you know, have nothing to lose, essentially, going yeah. into it. They have absolutely nothing to lose. You're against the most, um, the, the team that's expected to win. And you've been causing upsets um, in this tournament. So, so you know, the stage is set for them to c- cause an upset, just like Atalanta did against Leverkusen. Yeah, it's, it's I do agree with you in terms of them being the underdogs. And I think that they kind of a club that will kind of always be underdogs um, when it comes up against a, a Real Madrid or, you know, a Barcelona, a Liverpool, a United, a Bayern Munich, um, you know, but... They've been they've gone under the radar, which has been good for them. Um, it's just going to be so interesting to see the, as you mentioned, so many sort of subplots. The Marco Roy story, for example, Tony Cruz, his final mm. game for for Madrid. Um, Luka Two Modric said that he's yeah he said that he's made his decision um, about his future, but you know he's not going to say anything yet. But it could be his final game. Um, but at the end of the day, if there's something you don't want to be doing, is playing a Real Madrid side managed by Ancelotti in the Champions League final. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. It's- <laughs> It's just it, there's just that sense of inevitability about it. Yeah. Um, but I I I I have a lot of faith um, in, in in the German team. I, I genuinely think. I mean, versus PSG to keep two clean sheets in a, in a semi final is ridiculously impressive. Um, when you're playing, when you or you need defending against the best, um, you know, striker or winger in the world, in Mbappe. So, you know, it's 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 there for them. To cause an upset, as I mentioned, yeah. um, and we'll be glued to our seats for ninety minutes, as we always are. Um, let's quickly touch on some of the um, breaking headlines, Stevie, and this might be a bit more of our coverage throughout the off season between se- mm. between the um, um, between now and the, and the beginning of the next season. But three new managers um, confirmed. Let's start off with. The maybe one that surprises everyone the most in um, Barcelona appointing Hansi Flick. Um, yeah, that couldn't have been high up on the on the predictions list. It's just I still don't understand how it happens. I mean, yes, we've seen progress, you know, and and he likes to play good football, and and he looks like he's got a good rapport with players, and he handles himself well, and he's got the pedigree as a player. How do you get relegated for Burnley and get the Bayern job? Yeah, well, Daesh I mean, must be fuming. He took them to Europa. <laughs> yeah, no, fair. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I don't know if you lost me along the way there, but I've gone for Hansi Flick at Barcelona. Oh, so I'm, I'm, too, I'm too, I'm too, I'm too, I'm too, I'm too, thing on you're, the, you're on the in it already. Yeah, you're in it already. I've, I've been there, I've been, I've been reading it all day. I've been trying to get through there. I've, I've been waiting for it. <laughs> Okay. And I had to get it out. Vincent there. Company, uh, yeah. And a uh, spoiler. Hey, Stevie, spoiler, bro. No, you, I'm you've just ruined there. it for I've, everyone. I've, it's it's been the entire week it's been building here and, and I've yeah, had enough. No, but but we 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 touched on Hansi it. Last Flick, week. Good luck, good luck in Barcelona. He had a good time in Bayern, very but, German yeah. La Liga, v- 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 <laughs> poor, yeah, poor poor Chevy. But know, Vincent Company. But Vincent, Vincent Company is the manager of Bayern Munich. Yeah, no, it's it's wild. And the dream of seeing uh, La Foster now move over. He's going to have Champions League football. He's going to come yeah. with Vincent Company. Moting's out of a job. He's going to be playing alongside Unreal. Harry Kane. Um, you know, it's 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 a South African. You know, wearing the Bafana jersey just to just to encourage this. You know, manifest as as they call it. Um, yeah. Put it into the universe and make it come true. So La Foster, I can't wait to watch you um, in the Champions League next season. Um, there we yeah, go. Good, good ludicrous, luck. good luck. Ludicrous signing. Um, I mean, they clearly see see uh, a lot of promise because you you can't look at, at results and 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 say that he's he's necessarily yeah. earned that. So, um, yeah, that's massive. And and obviously touching on the Barcelona one, and then a uh, massive one in and it's unsure as to whether it's confirmed or not. You know, there's been a here we go you know, from um, Fabrizio or, or to confirm it. But um, the Leicester manager, Enzo um, Maresca, um, seems to be confirmed as the Chelsea manager um, with a five-year um, deal. Um, so Chelsea going about their business mm-hmm. and getting getting that deal over the line. Everyone, including us, were reporting on... Um, 
the Zerbi being the the successor um, of of Poch. So and not to be. So it seems like that's dead in the water. So we were discussing before this where you know well like, let's start off. What does this mean for Chelsea and where does the Zerbi go? Yeah, well, the interesting thing is, first of all, the the the, the ball revolution continues. Um, yeah. With regards to the board managers in the league, uh, that is now potentially to be Chelsea, United, um, Liverpool, City, Liverpool, or with uh, some Baldinos. Um, but yeah, I think that the Chelsea one's an interesting one. I, I still, we were chatting about it before we, we started recording. I just don't understand what's happening with Deserbi and where he's going to end up because, you know, for example, there's now talks that um, the United board are very much starting to move. Move in favor of keeping Ten Hag after his after his his win, so you know he, the fact that it was alleged that 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 a Premier League club had um, had paid the to get him out of his contract. to get him out for me it must have been false because it, I, th- I think it would have been announced by now if it was yeah. the case. Who, you know, who, and, who, who paid to get to Zerbi yeah. out of the contract like that that and you you, you expect that information to follow pretty soon after. It being announced that someone yeah, and they paid. announced it early as well. They announced it early in the season. It wasn't like it was like now, for example. They announced it before the last game, so it's 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 been a weird. So who knows? I mean, for me, United seems to be the only option left, really. If um, it is Enzo Amoresca that goes to that goes to Chelsea, so it's just it's, we're into a very weird summer with regards to some big managerial uh, appointments and decisions. Yeah, absolutely, um, and Stevie. That I think, you know, brings to a close. I guess all the football chat. Let's go on to the cricket and let's start with. There's been the, no cricket, bro. There's been no cricket. You don't reckon? There's been no cricket. What? There's no IPL final. Been, no protest. The IPL final didn't happen. The protest didn't play. What's there to talk about? The IPL final was an absolute blowout, waste of my time. A six-year <laughs> tournament finishing like that is disrespectful. Yeah. No, you know, it, it, it was a bit horrible. Um, and KKR just wiping the floor with um, your yeah. boys, Sunrises. Um, My boys. It, your, your boys, you, your, your predicted finalists. Okay, I, I was about to say. Um, your predicted finalists. But in a way, they were, you know, they were victim to Travis Head's success in the first half of the season in that as soon as Travis Head wasn't scoring runs and he was scoring, yeah, you know, first ball ducks, what it felt like in the, in the last five games. Um, they weren't really able to get their middle over a middle order operating, you know, no real runs from Markram, no real runs from Klaas. And essentially yeah. a team in the final bowled out for 113 and 18.3 overs, then um, easily chased by um, KKR um, in, you know, 10 and a half overs, 114 for two to take um, the trophy um and uh, I think that would have been um, Sunrise's first first trophy and possibly even their first final. Um, so, you know, big applause to KKR, but geez, what a, what a uh, wet final um, that was. And speaking of disappointment in cricket, Stevie, the, the Proteas going to West Indies, acclimatizing to um, a World Cup that will be, you know, getting used to the conditions of where mm-hmm. um, one of the host nations will be playing against, you know, a recovering, you'd say, West Indies team. And granted, it was largely a second-string South African team. Losing 3-0. Not what you want to happen out of players who are thrown in there and told, you know, go make a difference. Go and yeah, put go, your go, name go, on go, the, go put your name on... Yeah, go put your hand up. Um, go put your hand look, up. One thing, one thing I will say about this series is that it means next to nothing for our World Cup. As far as I'm concerned, um, well, now it does know. because we lost everything. No, it doesn't. Because... I don't think we'll be having the same conversation had we gone on one. But look at the team. We we, we, could, we literally we we had we had one, maybe two batsmen that are going to play on Monday in that team that was taking against the taking on the West Indies. But you're isn't, still adding but... KG Rabada. You're still adding Keshav Maharaj. Tabray Shamsi didn't didn't play. So of all the players that have played in this West Indies series, I'm looking at one of... So Reza Hendricks probably plays and Quinton de Kock probably plays. So you're looking at two players there and you're looking at maybe 
a, a Bartman who played, what, one game I think it was. That is basically it for who's going to be in our final World Cup team. So it's, it was essentially an S, a, a Proteus B team. So I'm not, I'm not worried about the series at all. I agree, but there were possibly two or three spots up for grabs, right? Well, I think and it was Nokia. Can Nokia show, put, put his hand up? Can, a, can a Bjorn Fortein put his hand up? Can a Rickleton put his hand up? And they didn't. And well, I think I think we could give props to to Reza because he actually he actually had a very decent inning score. Yeah, but I think Reza was already on the, the team, so I think that he's already booked his place. I yeah, mean, the but I think, the but also there was there was some the slightest asterisk next to his name, so he cemented it. He's the only one who's really cemented his position. I don't think you can drop Quinton. The only yeah, look, first... that, sec- that, that second innings I saw from Quinton was enough for me to say that he's still around. You know, he it was it was free flowing. It was what that forty of like eleven or whatever it was, two hundred thirty strike rate. Um, looked looked very free flowing. Um, again, after last year's World Cup, I'm I'm not worried about Quinton. I think that he you know he, he can, can rise come to into the occasion. Form, yeah, at, um, at any given point. Let's let's yeah. quickly um just cover what actually went down and in, in these three internationals. The first one, so that West Indies winning by 28 runs. Second one, West Indies winning by 16 runs. Last one, West Indies winning by eight wickets. So didn't really even push them down the line, right? Yeah. Um, if we're looking at the performers for South Africa, Reza with 100, you know, second highest run scorer, 127 runs, high score of 87. You know, that was an unbelievable innings, maybe a little bit too little, too late. That was in the first game. Um, then you have to go down to Rusty van der Dissen, which I actually thought was just a its a bit of a weird one for me because I think the only place that Rusty can play for the Proteas is four. Yeah, and well, I think, I think it's... So, and there's so many batsmen that can bat four in the Proteas. Well, he's he's he actually doesn't, he, doesn't, he never starts hot. He, he, you need to give him 12 balls to get in, which is But that's why I think the four is too low for him, really, because you know, you, you're number four. But, but I think one, two, three is just. T20. I think one, two, three is power play, and you don't want Rusty there for the power but play. But that's where he's been, been batting this year, to be fair. Batted there for the entire SA20. He is, but look at him and his Proteas. Um, well, I don't think, I mean, I don't think and, he, near and he goes at a run of ball sides. for at least 10. This is what I'm saying is that was he just there to be a captain? I mean, he was well, one he was of there. He, no, he was there because you're missing what four batsmen, five batsmen almost. You know, but so then give it was, to the next most likely person who's going to step in, right? Would you not rather, you know, give yeah, someone else? He, so I think chuck, I, in, I, I chuck think, in Tony DeZorzi then. Nah, Tony DeZorzi. Tony DeZorzi, Tony DeZorzi didn't, wasn't even making. Was barely making the um, the Durban Super Giants team by the end of the but season. But then what I'm saying is, chuck in the next best, almost likely batsman to 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 be the successor. I. I, but we're in a World Cup. Rusty didn't. R- Russie didn't play badly. He got. He scored fifty one. Yeah, in his but last the innings. main thing is, if there's an injury next week, and you have to call up a batsman, you're calling in Rusty. Yeah, and I, I guess that that's what I was saying. But I, I just think, yeah, he he's obviously not your go to, but he's got a very specific position. He want, he's there to build an innings in T Twenty cricket, which is a you know not the most synonymous saying um, with the format of the sport at the moment. So as we saw, he can go and he got his fifty one um, this you know a couple nights ago of you know thirty something balls, but he only gets there after a while. Um, so yeah, may, may, maybe you are right, but then I mean we can just look at the the rest of the list of. Largely disappointment. Brickleton not taking an opportunity. High score of 19. Bretzka, higher score of 19. Um, Mulder, a decent 36, but otherwise 45 runs yeah. over three matches. You know, people who've been performing at domestic level just not being able to make that conversion. Um, which, and and I'm, I'm not, I'm actually not that worried about the batting department for us because we have so many people coming back in. But you need to have one or two of those going hot. And, and it's a pity just not seeing any of them take that opportunity um, as those those next people to break through. Yeah, well, I mean, you look, you look, you, I mean, you check that, um, you know, Carl Mayer's batted nicely, uh, Ruston Chase batted so nicely, you know, King batted so nicely. So the West Indies are looking at like, oh, cool, we've got some Johnson Charles around. They, they go, yeah. cool, we've got some four, four big, big players scoring big runs. Yeah, it's um, like take but, your pick of the next form yeah. player. You know, you know, what yeah. I mean? you don't have Whereas someone. Thinking, let's say there's an injury. You don't have someone coming in. Shit. Well, when I was playing in a non-pressure game, I was also cuck. Now I'm in a knockout of a yeah. World Cup. 
and I've got to step up. You don't come in with that confidence, which I think is where the where the disappointment lies. Yeah, look, we don't have the best preparation for the World Cup, but also given the fact that you know, um, Class and Marker and only and Stubbs um, would have only been joining up with the squad now. Um, mm. Marco Janssen, for example, Kesh. Um, so it's it's Sound not up. it's not ideal. Um, Pet Lequire, for example, um, I was so frustrated. He he continues to frustrate me as a cricketer. I thought the season he had gone back to the Pet Lequire that sort of broke through in the pro tiers, but mm, during the mm, series mm, looked so far back. But, um, it looked like the one that for me has been lucky to be in a few pro tiers caps in the last few years, just not quite the same. Bartman with a nice first in the first first game though. A story of the right. uh, the the series for me is Kyle Peter with his three with his three wickets. Um, yeah, and decent, big wickets at that as well. Big yeah, wickets. big wickets and pressure wickets and 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 proper leggy wickets. You know, in terms of caught in the boundary, forcing a mistake, attacking players, yeah. letting them go, try to go after him. Um, so to 21 I mean, years getting old. Getting Johnson cool Charles him. in that last game looked impossible. He was seeing it like an absolute balloon yeah. um, and rushed him somehow after just being hit for six the next ball. And two of his um, wickets a series were the ball after being hit for six. And, you know, that just shows for yeah. a youngster to have the metal to be able to rock up the next ball as a leg spinner which is, you know, the most difficult ball to deliver um, yeah. and and to be able to, you know, land it exactly how you want it and, and execute is massive. I don't know how much of a part you'll play. I doubt very a, a big one at all in this World Cup. I don't even know if you'll be well, a part the squad. of the squad to remain. No, he's not. Um, so, but, a lot of the, I mean, a lot of, the, a lot of these guys are coming back home, to be honest. I mean, it's yeah. Petr Lequart's coming back home. Uh, Mulder's back home. Brietzka's back home. Um, yeah, Carla Peter's back home. Um Lungi and uh, Lungi's in the non-traveling no, reserve. Lungi's for staying as reserve, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, is he non-traveling? So well, I think I'm traveling or traveling. So I might be staying, but either way, so he's he's a reserve. Um, Nandri yeah. Berg. So a lot of these guys will, will head home. Um, yeah, but, but I mean, Stevie, not we, ideal, but we move. Yeah, we do, we do move, uh, but um, let, let's quickly touch on the the England Pakistan series. Well, what should have been a series only actually been one game. Um, of the three T20s that should have been played at this point, only one has been. Guess what the reason is? Rain, UK. You know how it, how it goes here. They also chose yeah. to have one in Cardiff. I mean, if it, that's got to be, I think, one of the wettest cities in the world. Um, but England looking to defend their, their T20 World Cup and looking solid, right? You know, that now looks like a, a only, only one game, but a, a confident team. Will Jacks full salt all having decent, um, you know, club seasons around on the, on the circuit, as, as it were. Um, Joss Butler in, in, big in the runs. And then they just, they, they go deep, you know, Bester, Brooke, Moan Ali, Liam Livingston, Chris Jordan. And then, um, you know, you're adding the experience of Adil Rashid, Reese Topley, um, and Joff, and now the, the coming there back. There we go. Joff, that's Joff that's Archer, the one the we need to talk one. about. Playing. That's the one. On there home soil. Just- Playing on home soil, he's been playing cricket in West yeah. Indies recently as um, did, this year. Did you see that he was? He's been playing for his club second team the last couple of like months. Oh, I would be broken if I was just rocking up. I'll to, refuse. Not a no, chance of my face in Jaffa Archer on a Sunday morning after a couple high, of pints. One one fifties. I mean, he's probably not clocking no. that, but still, I mean, just watching that guy run up. It's the most relaxed run up in world cricket, but yet yeah. the most intimidating. I don't know. Make it make yeah. sense. But it doesn't. And then, um, and then, and then, the, and then the go-to never, never disappears. Chris Jordan back again. Jeez, I mean, they, they do have an <laughs> aging squad. This English team, hey, you're looking at yeah, they've been Josh aging Butter, for a while. Besto, Mo and Ali, Rashid, Jeep is still there. Rashid, 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 I mean, Rashid's still there, but not slowing down. And and I mean, it's it, you don't need as much. You, you, hopefully, you don't need as much fitness unless you're really carrying the team. Um, but they're, they're there and they're clearly ready to play. So, and they have the depth. We've seen the, a lot of white ball success for England over the last couple of years. So, um, yeah. obviously, and a very bad white ball cut. Uh, um, but bar that, you know, really, really strong. And 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 there's depth there um, beyond that. Um, and yeah, so I mean, only one game gone. Hard to read too much into it. But um, they'll be looking to to defend um, the trophy for the T20 World Cup, which starts on Monday, Stevie. And there's not been enough noise Sunday, about it. Sunday. Sunday. Sorry, Sunday. P- please do not disrespect the USA versus Canada and the West Indies versus Papua New Guinea games on Sunday. <laughs> I, you should be shot at the spot for your lack of awareness for the GOAT matches that we are witnessing on, on the weekend. I, I don't know why there isn't the same Super 12 format 
because <laughs> you're losing a lot. You, you're telling people, get excited for the T, T20 World Cup. Oh, cool. Epic, when does it start? Sunday. Who's playing? Canada, America. Uh, where? Oh, in Texas. Excuse in me? Texas, dude. Like, what are we dude, doing here? Bro, what Uganda's are we there. Doing here? New Guinea's there. Oman's there. Nepal's there. It's vibes, dude. It's vibes. I mean, listen, if there are a couple of upsets, it could be it could be a massive vibe. But I, I just I like the Super 12 format. Get the get these brothers playing, you know. You can't have to beat West Indies, dude. Yeah, well, they'll do what South Africa couldn't. Um, but yeah, Stevie, we are playing um, I believe it is on Monday. Um, Monday, half past four, South Africa time, half past three, uh, UK time against yeah, Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Yeah, in and- New York things you didn't expect to expect yeah. to hear but um yeah i mean we're not going in with a lot of hope which is a good place to start as a proteus fan right it feels like it, you feel much safer in this zone um there we know we have the individuals to pull it off <laughs> we know that we do but can it be uh, done uh, on uh, the it's big a, stage? a South african proverb we know the proteus have the individuals to do it yeah no, true. But I mean, uh, dear. You know, for me, for me, one of the biggest, you know, the, the, and obviously we get the 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 chokers label, the C word, should I say? <coughs> I've really said. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, nice, nice. I'm gonna have to beep it out. nothing more than the, than that last T20 World Cup, losing to Netherlands and getting knocked out when it felt like we could have actually been favourites had we got into a knockout stage, mm-hmm. um, and giving up like a winning position versus Pakistan. Um, you know, that 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 was so one of many opportunities that was felt was there for the taking. Um listen, I have faith in my boy Tristan Stubbs. That's yeah, why I correct. think player, if he player gets of the tournament, player of the tournament, then he's saying he's bringing it home. He's bringing it home, taking it back to Kobecha. Um, you see what Eastern what Cape's I mean to, to 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 quote to quote Rashi Rasmus, let me tell you now, see Cleese is not the biggest thing in South Africa. Tristan Stubbs. <laughs> is the biggest thing in South Africa. That is what we're going to be saying in a month's time. He's rested and ready, bro. The the next biggest thing since AB, um, as a wise man, Stevie P once said. Um, but yeah, that's that's going to be going on. So we'll we'll continue the coverage of the T Twenty World Cup. So you don't have to, you know, follow what happens between um, Uganda and Papua New Guinea. We'll we'll, we'll keep you up to date and, and keep you on a graph. <laughs> Just live watch one. alongs. Um, yeah, exactly. Stevie, this that part of the show where we do our three predictions for next week, and we are going to start off with the biggest of them all: the Champions League final, Dortmund versus yeah, right. wow. Hala Madrid, Heritage Madrid, um, yeah. Tony Cruz Madrid. Um, Hey Jude. Yeah. Supposedly Jude Madrid, supposedly undefeated Madrid um, in Champions League football. Have you got a score line in mind? I do. I'll probably go with the score line, yeah. In fact, no, yeah, I'm gonna change it. Yep. Wow. So you did and you didn't. Okay. Um Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so score Three. team, eh? Yeah. Three, two, one. 2-1. One, 1-0 one Madrid. Madrid. Yeah, you see, I knew you were going to go 2-1. We, you know, I've actually noticed the trend. We always go with two ones. It's a safe one. I was going to go 1-0 Dortmund, actually. And then I was going to go 1-1 on pens. Madrid. Yeah, well, you've but, not committed to two ones, so... I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Um, so, 2 on Madrid um, and 1-0 for you. Then we're going to go um, back to um, Some Homeland. Stormers versus Lions. You're desperate. Um, Stevie, you're desperate. Um, yeah. And you know what? If the Stormers prevent you from having a little bit more fun um, on the weekend, I'm happy to oblige. Um, something tells me that we will have a, um, a home team bias in this one. So let's let's get go forward and, yeah. and, and predict. We're going to go team by points. Um, are you ready? Yeah, bro. Okay. Three, two, one. Stormers Lions by, by ten. Come on! There's just no ways. There's just no ways. Uh, Did you not watch how we decimated the Glasgow Warriors? Yeah. No, at home. Stormers at home are a different different breed, let me tell you. Um, oh, yeah. I'll, and, I'll then, that. and then we've got the final of the weekend. Um, so that's the Sri Lanka. We're not, we're not quite sure. Sorry, on Monday. Extended weekend. 
um, weekend because of the T20 World Cup. Pusa Monday. All weekend now. <laughs> Festival of cricket. Yeah. Um, South Africa versus Sri Lanka. So these ones are always difficult and we actually haven't done a, a prediction like this when we go at the same time. But... Um, Okay, for first we're gonna have to go with it. We're gonna have to go with the wicked margin and a run margin. Runs margin. Okay, let's start with the runs margin. Runs margin. Which might give away our wickets margin. I to do no, let's just go secret. wickets and runs. We're both gonna predict South Africa, let's be honest. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. So let's go wickets and runs. Yeah, that's what okay, I'm saying. Wickets so by how many wickets by how many runs? Okay, okay, got you. Okay, I'm ready when you are if you count us in. Okay, we're doing wickets first. Yes. Okay, so how, how many wickets? Right. Okay, so three, two, one, by four. Five. Okay. Five. Okay. Runs. Three, Yo. two, one, 30. 22. Okay, it's massive. Scores on the doors. Um, ready and waiting for an exciting um, T20 World Cup. It's always one of those, it feels like it's coming around for a while, but then not much time, but then there's the game and you're watching the boys in the World Cup kits and then you get properly excited. So I'm excited yeah. for that feeling to come back around. Um, Stevie, thank you very much for the show. It's been a long one. Always a pleasure. Always but pleasure. No, we, end we, of the after. season, we're fighting for yeah. trophies. You know, this is the part of the season we wanted it's to get fighting. to. We're winning trophies out here, bro. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so well done. You know, thank you. Manchester thank United, you. the best, the best um, season they've had in years. Um, maybe ever. Um, so Ten Hag has another year in the job, so everyone else is happy about that. Um, but let's enjoy the. We'll enjoy the football's weekend. Football mm-hmm. heritage. Either way it goes, it's going to be iconic. Um, yeah, correct. URC, massive, massive, massive week um, and season defining for the Lions. Um, and yep. then, of course, the kickoff of the T20 World Cup. What's just drama, there? drama, drama. It's even like a bit of, there's even a bit of savings this weekend for the Blitz box. It's just, it's all happening. It's all happening. Rolling Garros. It's all happening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you'll have to, you'll have, you'll have to hear. Two it. months to go to the, to, the, to the Olympics, you know. So, we're going to have to start bringing in some of that later. Absolutely. Absolutely. Stevie, thank you very much. That is episode 19 wrapped. Um, yep. And all send it to your friends and family. Do, yes. Send it to your friends and family. Um, actually send it to your friends and family. This is your point. We're stopping you now. Yeah. This is your time to take a pause. Click that share button. Click the like button. Forward it. Leaf. It's so easy these days. You click forward. It gives you the option with the WhatsApp and you just send to the family. Five you know seconds. that weird one with like 50 people and the cousins that you don't even know. You know, just throw that one. Just the one that's been that dormant one. for three years. Correct. Get people Correct. frowning. Yeah. Guarantee they'll click. Guarantee. Yeah. Anyway, exactly. Stevie, enjoy your weekend. Happy voting day. Good. Enjoy the rest Thank of you. it. Thank you. Yeah, um, all my two hours. Good. We'll we'll tune in next week for more blockbuster action. Yeah, Bye.